الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري وَحْلُلْ أُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al-Jum'ah and uh, to listen to the khutbah الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for choosing us to belong to the ummah for choosing us to belong to the followers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A few weeks ago, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we spoke on 
I think that was the last Friday in Ramadan. Bi'idhnillah, with the permission of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we spoke on the connection or the link between fasting, charity, and piety. Well, I know we have heard a lot about piety and charity and fasting in the last month and the last few weeks. But I want to remind myself and remind you, brothers and sisters, that now that we have fasted, or now that we have practically fulfilled four of the pillars of Islam, and for those of us who have been to Hajj, would have fulfilled five pillars of Islam, not ten, eh? five. That is, the first pillar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O ye who believe, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. So Allah addressed the believers in chapter 2 verse 183, those who have faith. So those who have had faith would have fasted because the verse said to fast. Fasting has been prescribed unto you as it was prescribed unto those before you. So, based on the quality of Iman, of faith, we obeyed and we fasted. We performed the fourth pillar of Islam. So the first pillar, the sign of faith and Iman, guided us by the mercy of God, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fast the fourth pillar. And in Ramadan, we would have prayed, and some of us do pray more in Ramadan, and I have told you that on Eid day, with the permission of Allah, you see the numbers just, not just dropped, but disappeared. In Ramadan, you had five, six hundred people praying Taraweeh Salah. After Ramadan, it just went down into the fifties. And I mean, last night we had a hundred plus, but you know, it just disappeared. I mean, I don't want to say that we are Ramadan Muslims and Eid Muslims because then people come to the point and say, well, at least. We were doing a little bit. You know, people have this tendency of saying, well, you shouldn't say we are Ramadan Muslims and we are Eid Muslims because at least we are doing Ramadan and Eid. But you know what is interesting? Some of us, that's all we have been doing for our entire life, only come in for Eid. Some people only go to the masjid for Eid for their entire life. So sometimes I wonder, when are we going to step up? Which is a very sad situation. But be that as it may, I don't want to speak about Ramadan and Eid today, inshallah. I want to remind myself and you on another aspect. However, technically linked to Ramadan. Now that we have fasted and we have prayed and we have given charity, etc., 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 we want to make sure we keep those blessings. We want to make sure what? We keep those blessings and we don't lose them. So in the second khutbah today, inshallah, we want to touch on a topic, a very interesting topic. You see, after Ramadan, and with, with Ramadan just leaving us a few days ago, we're still in that little spirit, alhamdulillah. Not too many people though, because I still didn't... You know, when it was the month of Ramadan, people tried to come for Juma on time. People tried to come to pray on time. After Ramadan, it's as though Juma is finished, Masjid finished, everything done. You know, astaghfirullah. There's a hadith which says that in Ramadan, shaitan, Satan is locked up. Sometimes I want to know if we locked up after Ramadan. The devil was locked up in Ramadan and we were all loose to come to pray. 
after Ramadan, he looks his door. We went, we went into, I don't know, I don't want to say what it is. What has happened? The prayer, the ibadah, the Quran, the vigor. When I walked in here and I saw the few people, I'm like, what has happened to Ramadan? Did we get taqwa in Ramadan? Did we benefit from Ramadan? Our prayer, our amal should now be at a different level. Because that was the purpose of the month of fasting last month. To energize us. To strengthen our faith. But again, that's not a point we want to talk about today, inshallah. I was getting to a different issue where... With that little spirit in Ramadan, it's kind of a little difficult, alhamdulillah, to get back into bad habits quickly. Because alhamdulillah... By the mercy of Allah, with all the good that we have benefited in the month of Ramadan, it takes some time before we get into the satanic path. But there is one thing that is very easy to get into. One thing that is very easy to get into. And sometimes I like to ask the cameraman to click on those people who are sleeping. So people who are looking at the khutbahs all over America will know we have a bunch of sleepers in America. I love to do that sometimes. Because... Anyhow, so that we could be reminded, because the khutbah is a line and a sign for us to be reminded. I was mentioning that there is something... It might be harder to go back to the clubs and go back to drugs and go back to alcohol and go back to fornication and go back to adultery and go back to all the haram things immediately after Ramadan. But there's one thing that we could easily slip by with. And that is our words. How we talk. What we say. Very, very, very important. And today, inshallah, in the second khutbah, I want to remind myself and you on that. Because there is a hadith that the Prophet wasallam says, a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in which he reminds us and warns us that on the day of judgment, on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah, Many people will rise bankrupt. You would have heard this hadith many a times. Many people would rise bankrupt. And the companions of the Prophet ﷺ ask him, would it mean financial bankruptcy? And he said, no. He said, the people who would rise bankrupt will be those people who prayed their salah. Fasted in Ramadan, gave their charity, and performed their Hajj. But what would have happened is that even though they performed all these amal and deeds in prayer and charity and fasting and pilgrimage, etc., 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 they would have abused so many people, insulted so many people backbited and slandered and hurt so many people that all their blessings would go to the people they have caused injury to or hurt. And all the things that they have done, the blessings will go to those people and they who prayed in Ramadan and fasted and gave their thousands of charity and performed ten hajj, etc., they will rise on the day of judgment with nothing in their books. And the people whom they insulted and abused and oppressed will have all their blessings. We don't want to be in that situation. And one of the easiest crimes to commit is the crime of words. You know, there's a famous saying that it, it is easier to slip by the tongue than by the feet. It is easier to slip by the tongue than by the feet. So we got to be very careful that we don't lose all these blessings that we accumulated in the month of Ramadan, inshallah. So in the second khutbah today, bi'ithnillah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, I want to remind myself and remind you 
of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says about words and how to talk and how to deal with people, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us in Jannah, in paradise. شان کے ہو لائق وہ سنا کہاں سے لاؤں تیری شان کے ہو لائق وہ سنا کہاں سے لاؤں تجھے آئے پیار جس پر وہ نیدہ کہاں سے لاؤں وہ نیدہ کہاں سے لاؤں تیری شان کے ہو لائق وہ سنا کہاں سے لاؤں تجھے آئے پیار جس پر وہ نیدہ کہاں الحمدللہ نحمده و نستعینه و نستغفره و نؤمن به و نتوقل علیہ ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Once more we thank Allah subhanahu wa taala for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Jum'ah, the Friday congregational prayer, to listen to the khutbah. And we pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. And I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to deliver this khutbah or sermon inshallah. I remind myself and I remind you that as human beings, we are weak, we know nothing, and therefore I put my trust in Allah, for we cannot say or do anything without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the wisdom, the knowledge, the guidance, and the ability from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah, the piety, the taqwa, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to fulfill this responsibility in the second khutbah, inshallah. I put my trust, I put my tawakkal in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. In the Holy Quran, very interesting in chapter 2 that surah bakara i get this verse here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us especially and i want to remind myself and you of this verse chapter 2 verse 263 and it refers a little bit because ramadan has been a month that we went a lot into charity and a lot of us, uh, we thought that we bought God off in Ramadan. We bought out Allah in Ramadan. Again. Hear what Allah says. Linking to what we said in the first khutbah with the permission of Allah. Words. Words link to charity. What Allah says about that. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 263 Qawlum ma'roof Interesting Qawlum ma'roof wa maghfira Qawlum ma'roof wa maghfira khairum min sadaqa Words Words, kind words, good words, nice words, and wa literally means unforgiveness. 
The Mufassirin and commentators of this verse say, covering the faults of others, not talking about people, not exposing people, not ill speaking people, kind words and covering the faults of others, khairum min sadaqa, are better than giving charity. Yattabi'uha adha. Now we'll continue what it says. Kind words and covering the faults of others are better than giving charity and then following the charity with insults and abuse to people. Injury. Hurting people after that. Subhanallah. Wallahu ghaniyun halim. And Allah says, for Allah, He is the most forbearing. You know, if you look at the tendency of people today in the world, you have that problem a lot of times. People reproach. People, when they do something f for you, they feel that they have an upper hand over you. I mean, you don't want me to tell you that. You see that in all the masjids going on. Well, not all, most of them. Alhamdulillah, we don't have that problem here. Most of these masjids have got election and politics. If they pay the imam, then they insult him, abuse him, or kick him out after. That's why so many masjids don't have imam in South Florida. You know, this week I had about two or three masjids calling me for imams to lead salah, for Jummah. Because they pay the imam. So when they pay him, they could follow injury, they could hurt, they could abuse, they could insult, they could do what they want. I'm just starting with that level. Forget about jobs and work and homes. Some husbands feel if they give their wife a dollar, they could beat her with it. Some women feel if they cook food for their husband, they could insult him and say, hey, eat your food, kutta. Come on, dog, I cooked the food for you, already eat it. Because I did you a favor. So the, what Allah is saying here, if we do something for someone, don't spoil that good deed by insulting and abusing the person after. See what I'm saying? That's just a problem. Whether we like it or not, doing a good deed, and the word here, sadaqah, does not only mean money. It means doing a good deed for someone. Doing a kind and charitable deed for someone. We must remember, not because I gave this brother this, or I gave him a ride, or I dropped into the masjid, or I helped him get a job, or I did something for him, that it means I could walk all over him. If we did something for someone, we didn't do it for him. Whom did we do it for? We didn't even do it for Allah. Think about that. We did not even do it for Allah. We did it because Allah says to do it. Okay, that's one point. We did not do it for God because He doesn't need us. That's why Allah comes down and says, Wallahu ghaniyun halim. He uses that word after. He is ghani. He doesn't need anything from us. So if we gave a guy a dollar, or we helped someone, or we gave someone food, or we cooked food for someone, or we bought food for someone, or we helped someone, whatever it may be. We didn't do it for Allah because Allah says he's ghani in this verse. And ghani is like he needs nothing. He's the wealthiest and he needs nothing from us. He, we did it because he says to do it, that's one. But at the end of the day, Allah does not get greater by us giving someone something. You follow the point? Allah does not get greater. Allah is already Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. By us giving charity or helping a poor man or giving your wife something or your husband something or helping a friend or an employee or so, whatever, it doesn't make Allah greater. He is already Akbar, the greatest. The one who benefits from that would be us. When we help someone, the blessings in doing that good comes to our account. You follow? And we benefit from that. So technically we may think 
that we are directly helping this person, but indirectly we are helping ourselves because we get the blessings for it. And Allah is saying here now, <coughs> don't go and abuse and inju- hurt the person and think, well, I helped him, I did this for him, so he got to do this for me. Or he didn't do this for me and I helped. Don't look for that payback. Why are we looking for that payback here? If you want the payback here, well, then you can go to hell up there. That's just what the bottom line is. If we want the payback here, we'll have to go to hell there. Because we got the reward for what we did. So much care. But if we did it for the sake of Allah, we get the blessings and we'll get the rewards here and there in the hereafter. And many a times people abuse and insult people after they give them something or take advantage of people because they think that they give it to that person. Or oh, I help that person. That's a wrong concept. In Islam, we don't believe in that. In fact, we believe that when we do good for somebody, we are really helping ourselves. That sadaqah that Allah speaks about in this verse stands in the way of calamities and disasters, prevents us from difficulties and disasters and problems in life. So we're really helping ourselves. But because some of us think that we give it to somebody else, we expect that somebody else to pay us back in kind or in some way or the other. And hence, we think we could do that to them. And I was telling you, that's a problem. I mean, alhamdulillah, I travel all over America and I see it happening. It happens in masjids by the most so-called executive directors of masjids who claim to be pious, doing it to their imams and sheikhs. And I could say that because, alhamdulillah, nobody's doing that to me here in Darul. So, but I don't have a problem. Those imams can't say that, those poor guys, because before they get down the member, they'll be thrown outside. But I can say it for them, inshallah. Because the executive and the board and the people pay them and give them money or help them or get them a car or a house or something, if they preach the right thing from the khutbah, well, they're fired because it's a favor. That's how it works. So if it happens with this most sophisticated so-called Muslim leaders who lead Muslim organization with the spiritual leader, could you imagine what is happening in the rest of the community? Could you then imagine what's happening in the business places? Could you imagine what is happening in homes? What is happening in other places and regular organizations? It's happening in the place it should not happen. Very sad situation. (coughs) Brothers and sisters. And most of the time, it's not that anybody will beat someone. You look at employers and employees, workers, bosses, employers and employees, and also employees as well as employers. Workers should not... Instead of wasting your time in speaking your co-workers, your employers, instead of us wasting our time in speaking our neighbors, our family members, our co-workers, our classmates, our roommates, why don't we put that energy into doing something good? Huh? These words, that's why Allah says, قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ Kind words are better than helping a person and then insulting him after. You know, there's a hadith, subhanAllah. Time does not permit, ah, subhanAllah, the time just got. Just got five minutes or ten minutes to conclude. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa in Bukhari hadith says, Save yourself from Jahannam. What he said? Save yourselves from Jahannam. And then he went on to say, By helping someone, by doing good to someone, even if it means half of a date, you know the kajur, the date, even if it means half of a date, not even a whole date. Now don't bite it and then give them it. Means if that's all you have, half of a date, save yourself from the fire of hell by doing that good. To give another, to help another person, even if it means half of a date. Now, he didn't really mean 
just a date. But he used that as an example because that is what they had in great quantity in those days. And that was a line of wealth and a different, different interpretation on the date. But it means however you can help a person, a helping hand to cross the road, help a person to get promoted in their job, not go and, you know, in the real estate business, astaghfirullah, I know they are Muslims, eh? I've had so many cases came to me that I start saying, listen, I'm not a realtor, don't talk to me about real estate business. One Muslim brother hears that another Muslim brother is going to buy that property down the road. He goes behind his back and buy the property before. Think about that. He's not even helping the brother, and he's stealing an opportunity from the brother. And that is so haram in Islam. If there, you know someone is getting something and got a contract or got a deal to get something, a Muslim brother should not do that. It is totally prohibited in Islam. Haram directly on that issue. Happens with businesses, it happens with deals. But anyhow, the Prophet وسلم, in whatever way we could help someone, even if it means a half of a date, save yourself, let us save ourselves from hellfire, from hell, by helping that person with that. And do you know what he said after? Listen to what he said. He said, and if you don't have half of a date, if we don't have half of a date, at least say a kind word to the person. Allah Akbar. And look, Allah speaks of it. If we don't have something to give someone, at least say something good to the someone. That's hadith. That's why I'm reminding myself anew, Ramadan has come to an end. But let us not end our deeds and ruin our blessings by the things we say to people. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Bukhari again says, And if you cannot say something good to someone, what did he say? Urdu mein kya kehte? To khamosh raho. Then keep quiet. In regular day to day languages, like let us shut up, shut our mouths. If we can't say something good to someone, don't say something bad. The hukum, the command of the Prophet ﷺ is not just don't say something bad, but he says keep silent. How many of us say so many stupid things about people? We only hear, we don't even have to hear something. Shaitan only have to give us a thought in our heart and we start talking. Shaitan only have to waswasa. As Allah says in the Quran, Satan only whispers in the hearts of some of us and we start talking. That's a command in the Quran here about the words. But do you understand the technicality of this? Allah is not only telling us to say good words to people, speak nice to people, speak kindly to people. He is saying, even if you give a man money, even if we build a house for someone, even if we buy something for someone, even if we help someone, we do not have the authority to speak to them how we want, when we want, and what we want to say to them. That's the, that's the bottom line lesson to learn in this verse. See, a lot of us think, well, now I have authority to, tell, to do that to the person. Allah is saying, even if we did all of that. Very serious. You know, that's why even in Islamic laws, Islamic laws are so beautiful, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That's why if we really read the Quran and we study the hadith and the sayings of the Prophet Wasallam, even if a man and woman, a husband and wife, even if they're going through a divorce, and they have legal reasons to divorce, and they have spiritual reasons to divorce, and they have valid reasons to divorce according to Quran and Hadith. Yet, the Islamic law is, the man should still keep that wife in his home, in his house, for 90 days, and should not abuse her. Even if she's taken a divorce him, he cannot abuse her. He cannot insult her. Well, don't even talk of a hit. It does not exist. In addition to that, he is supposed to feed her and clothe her and be loving and nice to her. How do you like that? 
Even if a man and woman going through a divorce. You want any separation worse than that? The worst se separation and thing that is permissible in Islam, but is not pleasing to Allah, but even though it's permissible, and it's the worst thing that Allah does not like, even in that, that case, if a woman or a man, husband and wife are taking a divorce, he is still supposed to treat her nice, and not say, I give you a hundred thousand dollars, uh huh, or I buy you a car, I give you a house, I feed, I'm feeding you. Not a word. According to the Sunnah and Islam, he is supposed to feed her, clothe her, and treat her kindly with love. Allah. Then what happened? What happens to everybody else? Eh? Look at how much a husband and wife would have given to each other for years. If there is any reproach and abuse, should be between a husband and wife who are going through a divorce. Now, a lot of people do that because they follow their own culture and they separate and they fight and they sue one another and they go through hate and they want to kill one another and, da -da 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 and the whole nine yards. Islam doesn't have that. Islam says, even if a husband and wife, even, still, in the last straw, they should live with love and harmony, and harmony and not abuse and insult each other. Now, brothers and sisters, our deeds, our amal, our prayer, our salah, our fasting, our hajj, everything that we do, we ruin the blessings of that when we say hurtful things. And I'm not talking of doing things right now. We're only speaking of Saying things. Only saying. It is so important in Islam. That's why the Prophet wasallam said. That's why the Rasul wasallam was so strong on the point that if we can't say something good, keep quiet. And that goes for everybody. Workers, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, community people, everybody. We need to know our place and our time. I know only last night somebody was telling me here, and I know it happens in other places everywhere else. Well, most places, not everywhere. A lot of people come, new Muslims, to the masjid. And as they come, they convert. And some radical Muslims think, well, oh boy, and they start to pound everything, force them into this. Sometimes they don't even know how to talk to them, they chase them back outside. I've had questions where ladies come to pray salah. We have had cases when non-Muslim women came to observe Islam. And some cultural, edu uneducated women said, Oh, they're coming here, you've got to put on hijab and come. Or oh, don't come. Where, where you got a law from? We need to take back those idiotical things back. If the person is not a Muslim, the person is still learning Islam, doesn't have a clue, you don't understand dawah? In the line of dawah? How to speak nice to people? How to be loving? How to be kind? That's why a lot of people run away from Islam. That's why a lot of Muslims stay away from Islam. Because those who practice Islam don't even know how to be nice to Muslims, their own Muslims. Those who practice Islam don't even know how to be nice to their own Muslims, fathers to be nice to people who don't know Islam. That hate and that, that problem. I told you one day, a brother told me that there was an interfaith iftar at a masjid. And in the evening, one lady said, Astaghfirullah, where all those non-Muslims come from, all they have fasted, they came to make my food haram. Astaghfirullah. And this happened in Florida. What do you call these people? Ninkum poops? Idiots? Huh? Where they got the Islam from? Did the Prophet wasallam did that to his uncle, Abu Talib? Did he do that to people? He invited the Jews and the Christians and the people who didn't believe in God. He would invite them to his home and feed them. Feed them. Feed them with his own hands, he would feed them. People who did not even believe in a God. Jews, Christians, non-Muslims, he would feed them and take care of them. And we have people coming to see what Ramadan is and Islam is, and we like, they come in to spoil our fast. Probably they come in to spoil your food. We are so greedy that we want to eat everything. We probably thought they will eat what we're going to eat. Anyhow, in that note, as before we conclude, inshallah, we're having an interfaith program this Sunday here at 4 p.m. The Broward Interfaith Council is having a 9-11 program here. And that is so commendable that the Interfaith Council has decided, because for the past years, they've had all their 9-11 programs in synagogues and churches. 
And this year, they have decided to have it at Darul Uloom's auditorium. It's free, so don't worry, you don't have to pay. It's free, come, there will be refreshments, so now you should be a little more happy, inshallah. Uh, <laughs> but that's a feather in our cap, because when they have that program here, you know, it, it kills all that hate that other people have against Muslims and Islam, because we come in here, they come in here, these are interfaith workers, people who think good of Muslims and Islam, and they want to come with us and have this program. And the guest speaker is a professor, you can check Al Hikmat magazine, you will see the details. It's Dr. Karen. Um, I hope I had the name correct. But the name, she's from St. Thomas University. And um, a professor and doctor, the details is in Al Hikmat, page 16. Get a copy. But everyone I invited to this Sunday, they're going to talk about before 9 11 and after 9 11 and a better way to work with Muslims and non Muslims and everybody together. Very educational program. So I want to invite all of you as I inshallah as i touched on interfaith so we're having it here home here inshallah which is a good sign because some of us sit here and say oh people by talking muslims out there people are speaking all muslims out there no we need to get up we need to get out there we need to spread the message of islam we need to speak the right things say the right things the right place the right time and inshallah people will get educated out there and that's what we got to do and here's a good start again inshallah before we conclude, I want to quote another verse of the Quran. Very interesting, very interesting. Maybe if Allah permits, we'll continue on the topic next week, inshallah. But another verse again to do with speech. So it's not an idea that I have. It's a verse in the Quran that Allah is speaking about here. Hear what Allah says in Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 70. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Attaqu Allah Wa qulu qawlan sadida Allah addresses the Muslims, the believers If you believe in God, He's saying If you believe in Allah, if you have faith in Allah and His Rasul Allah says, well I want to tell you something if we think we prayed in Ramadan and we fasted and we gave charity and we performed Hajj, here is a message for us. Hear what Allah says. Waqulu qawlan sadida. Allah says, and speak words that are straight, kind, nice, and good. Chapter 33, verse 70. And you know what he says? Allah doesn't only say speak nice words. But hear what Allah says. By just talking nice, husbands and wives, children, workers, bosses, employees, brothers, sisters, organizations, whoever we may be, whatever profession we may be. And that's something I like in America, you know, and I know we have a police officer here. I always remember the first time I came and I was in Orlando, the guy that was driving me around in Orlando, the siren came on, they pulled him as, I thought it was some movie we were in up in Orlando. So the light, I only saw these lights and sirens in the movies, you know. Pull him aside, smile with him, everything. <laughs> when we left, I said, what happened? He said, give me a ticket. I said, have a nice day. And he smiled with me. But that was how polite and nice he was. He even smiled and said, have a nice day. You pitch up in immigration, they send you back and say, have a nice day. Wish you all the best. See you again. <laughs> At least they talk nice, which is good. Some of us need, some of us, they're doing you something that will hurt you, but they tell you it in such a nice way, you don't even feel hurt. Today we try to tell somebody something good, but we tell them in such a bad way that we make them cry. We're trying to tell somebody something good, do something good, but we hurt them and we, the way we say it, that we make them cry and hurt them more than the police officer who gives them a ticket and says, bye, have a nice day, see you again. You see, we probably, we got to learn. وَقُولُ قَوْلًا sadida. Allah says, speak straight, nice, soft, kind, good words. And if we do that, hear what Allah has promised us. Yuslih lakum, yuslih lakum a'malakum, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wa man yuti'illaha wa rasoolahu, faqad faza fawzan azima. When we speak nice to people, straight and good, and don't lie, don't be sarcastic, don't be hypocritical, be nice, honest, sincere with people. You know what happens? 
Allah says, Yuslih lakum. I will make your actions and your deeds, I will straighten your problems and difficulties in life. Your amal, your actions, your job, whatever you're doing, I will get things okay for you. You just be nice, and I will be nice to you and do everything for you. Yuslih lakum amalakum. Allah will straighten our actions and get things okay for us. Long tafsir on that. I don't have the time for that. lakum zunubakum. And Allah says, if you speak and be nice to people, I will forgive you your sins, inshallah. Look at that. By just talking nice to somebody else, Allah will forgive us our sins. So let's be honest, sincere, and nice. And you know, I always like a little humor. And before we conclude the khutbah, I want to share a little humor on the line of being nice and good in words. You know, and don't lie when we're trying to be nice. You know, there's a father, there was this, this little boy. He went to school, the Muslim school, and the teacher asked him, the teacher said, what does inshallah mean? He said, <laughs> well, the teacher asked the entire class what inshallah means, and he was the first boy that jumped up. I know, I know the answer. You know, some people have heard. The teacher said, what is the answer? He said, inshallah means no. <laughs> the teacher said, what? Where did you get that from? He said, because every time I go out with daddy and I say I want a chocolate in the shop, he says, inshallah. <laughs> I go to the, somewhere else, I say I want to get a bicycle, he says, inshallah. I want to get a nice shirt, a toy, he says, inshallah, and I never get it. So maybe that's what inshallah means, no? <laughs> so even the daddy was lying to the son in the name of Allah, inshallah. So let's don't be that kind of liar. <laughs> That's not the straight word that Allah is talking about. Let's be sincere, be nice, be good, and Allah will guide us. Maybe he should have said, Allah gives, Daddy doesn't have the money. When Allah gives me the money, I'll buy it for you, inshallah. Then he will be, would have been able to tell the teacher, it means Daddy doesn't have the money, but when he gets it, he will buy it by the will of Allah, inshallah, and not go with the wrong impression. So if the Daddy could train the child in a different context and abuse the name of Allah by the will of Allah, what do you think some of us do as workers and community people? Let's be very careful we don't make that mistake, inshallah. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, Rahimin, ya Ghafur Rahim. Alhamdulillah, ya Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, Allah. We ask thee to shower your peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We ask thee to guide us all on the right path. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us for whatever we have said wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, Allah. Forgive us for whatever mistakes we have made by our tongue, Ya Allah. Intentionally or unintentionally, Ya Allah. Guide us and protect us, Ya Allah. And help us to be able to do good deeds and say good things, Ya Allah. And give us all the good in this world and the good in the hereafter, inshallah. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina ala banar. Bi rahmatika, Ya Arham Rahmin. In Allah, Malaika to who you salute Allah and Nabi, Ya Ayyuhaladina Amanu Salu Alaihi was Salimu Taslima. Allah must say Allah said in Amalana Muhammad Wa'ala Ali Muhammad Dimbi Adidiman Salah was Sam. Allah must say Allah said in Amalana Muhammad Wa'ala Ali Muhammad Dimbi Adidiman Qa'ada Wakam. Was Salih Allah Jamil and Biai Wal Mursalin Wa'ala Kuli Malaika Tikal Mukarabin. Wa'ala Ibadi Lahi Salahin Berahmatika Ya Arham Rahimin. Ibadi Allah in Allah Yamaru Bel Adli Wal Ehsan Wa Ita Ivil Kurba Wienha and Il Fasha Wal Munkari Wal Bal. Yaidu Kumla Alla Kumta the Karun. Wala Dikru Lahi Ta'ala Ala Wa Aula Wa Aiz Wa Jal Wa Hamu Akbar Allah. Oh, Akbar Akimasa. Madine ke din raat Allahu Akbar Madine ki kya baat Allahu Akbar Madine ke din raat Allahu Akbar Madine ki kya baat Allahu Akbar Madine ke din raat Allahu Akbar Madine ki kya baat Allah Akbar Madine ke din raat Allah Akbar Madine ki kya baat Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Azano ke lamhat Allah Akbar Namazo ke aukat Allah Akbar Azano ke lamhat Allah Akbar Namazo ke aukat 
Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ye qabr nabi ar Ye mehrab mimbar Ye qabr nabi ar Ye mehrab mimbar Muqaddas maqamat Allahu Akbar Muqaddas maqamat Allahu Akbar Ye qabr nabi ar Ye mehrab mimbar Ye qabr nabi ar Ye mehrab mimbar Muqaddas maqamat Allahu Akbar Muqaddas maqamat Allahu Akbar Muwaja Mubarak Salamu ki barish Muwaja Mubarak Salamu ki barish Durudun ki sogat Allahu Akbar